Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. This podcast is being sponsored by Get Loopy. On episode 41, you can hear the story of Isabel, the co-founder and CEO. Get Loopy. Get a 20% discount off your first order. Get loopy.com. We've spoken to John already. He's the Superman who has climbed all the highest mountains in the world. Welcome, John. And let's talk a little bit about leadership. And my theme is global business coaching with sports parallels. So I always say whoever is a good mountaineer, a sports person can transfer that into the business. And you said it before, it's about the team, it's about the support, it's about building the trust. I also think if you go on a Mount Everest expedition, you need to have a trust in the team that is going yeah. with you. Tell us a little bit more about that. Like, how do we transfer that into leadership? So the best leaders I've ever encountered are the Sherpa on Mount Everest. And to give you a insight into how they lead is also how I suggest leading businesses and teams. Sherpa are not taking selfies. They're not jumping in front of everybody and saying, follow me up the mountain. They're not charismatic as a generality, like giving beautiful speeches. Instead, they know their mountain like the back of their hand. They are fully competent. They offer support and they're able to see when their team is struggling. And then when they notice there's a struggle happening, they pick up that extra weight. That's what I saw of in general of the Sherpa who are on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And they celebrate when they see others get to the top. You really see them like excited. And mm -hmm. I think there's so many beautiful messages about what real leadership is in watching how Sherpa lead. Put your own ego aside. Quit trying to make everybody impressed with how cool you are and how many amazing things you've done in your life. Instead, get really good at understanding what the terrain is in front of you. Get really good at spotting when your team is in need and then shoulder their weight for them. If you notice that one of your teammates is struggling, grab some of that weight, carry it yourself, get to the back of the line and celebrate as they make their own summits. That's real leadership. Mm -hmm. When it comes to teamwork, I won't climb with another person unless they're willing to admit what, what their struggle is in the moment. If they're not willing to say, hey, my hands are cold, or I'm feeling hungry right now, or my knee hurts, or we need to stop for a break. If they don't go there, I don't bring them on the team because that means I don't get to help them. That means they continue to spiral down their hurt cave and there's no opportunity for actual teamwork to happen. And so admitting here's where I can use a little bit of help is in mm -hmm. fact incredibly empowering to any team that you're a part of. It's not a destructive trait. It's an empowering trait. That's true. And my question is, as a coach, how do you recruit your team? Obviously, when you go to, let's say, Kilimanjaro or Mount Everest, I don't know, do you have a choice of the team? Or if you were to recruit the team, what questions are you asking them? Or how do you test them? So I'll answer where I've been recruited two teams <laughs> first. Like on Everest, it was an application process and you had to prove that you'd been on a certain number of mountains previously. You had to share your experience and then they would contact the other climbs, the, the guides of the other climbs that you were on. Mm. So they wanted to make sure you were competent. Mm. And that is, I've mentioned competence a few times. That's a key. Personally, when I'm creating teams, I look for, is this person, especially if it's a long expedition, is this person a joy to be around? If they drain my energy, I don't want to go climb with them even for a single day. 
But if I'm going to spend two weeks with this person, I have to be able to be lying in a tent with smelly socks and smelly <laughs> underwear dangling that's drying above our heads and still be enjoying the time with them. When we're at our worst, is this person bringing a positive energy and good spirit to the climb? So great energy, competence, and admission of when they need help is another great one. And a willingness to turn back or to shift the plan. Mm -hmm. If someone is so bullheaded that they have to get to the top and they're willing to risk their life or they're willing to risk other people's lives, I don't want to be a part of that person's team. Can I be on your team? Of course. I, mean, I know, I know. <laughs> I climbed, climbed Kilimanjaro and a lot of people, I told them like, there was no washing your hair for eight or nine days. Somebody asked me the other day, can you wash out your clothes? And I'm like, no, you bring your stuff, you wear. I was wearing my socks twice. I didn't have yeah. socks every yeah. single day. And I still survived. And I have to say, you have to listen to what the guides are telling you. The guy yep. told me, you have to take your altitude pills. I'm like, yes, I do that. And I felt so much better. You have to follow the leader. Yeah. If you were to say, no, forget you. I don't want to take these pills. Then are you really a part of the team anymore? Are you really there with them? Or are you just wanting to do your own thing with these other people who happen to be nearby? And you're getting irritated with them and they're getting irritated with you. That's not being a teammate. So you've made the right choice. That was the right decision fully. I think so. One question that I have, and it goes into leadership, right? So when I went to Kilimanjaro, I had the idea to bring my Uno game with me. Nice. And actually, we were playing Uno more or less every single night. And forget about the book that I brought with me. I could not concentrate <laughs> on reading a book. You so. can't read at altitude. It's so hard to concentrate. I know. Whoever wants to mountaineer, don't bring a book, but bring the Uno games. What are some of those highlights that you have and that we can show is leadership because I feel like that Uno game was bringing us much more together. We were laughing together. Mm -hmm. So it's that cross-cultural awareness and cross-cultural enjoyment with the team. The last time I was in Kilimanjaro, we played Farkle, which is like a dice game. And we, I just remember laughing and cheering and screaming. Mm. And we we're all so tired after the day's yeah. work, but we're sitting in that tent rolling these dice, just like you were with Uno. On Everest, I remember sitting in tents playing fades, and that was our game that we just got drawn to. And it's not the moment of leadership that makes for a good photograph of the man on top of a mountain with his arm extended and like with his ice axe planted saying, lead, join us to the top. It's not that, but it's so much more empowering because it's like Henry V in Shakespeare when he dresses up as the commoners and he walks amongst everyone encouraging them and being real with them and saying, I'm here with you. I'm going to be fighting alongside you. It's that moment of encouraging through, let's not take ourselves so seriously and just take some time to laugh and enjoy one another's company. I just wanted to mention that, right? Don't take yourself so seriously. There is this wonderful book, The Art of Possibility. And one of the chapters is exactly about that. So we need mm. to leave our egos aside. And also Nelson Mandela says, leaders are, you want to lead from the back and let the others feel they're in front. Couldn't agree more. That's beautiful. I got to read that book, but I, I, I definitely admire Nelson Mandela's leadership style. I was in South Africa, and coincidentally, when he passed away and to celebrate his life with locals was one of the joys of my life. And I kite surfed across to Robben Island where he was imprisoned and we put flowers on the island. And it was a really incredible thing to be a part of. And it's, I get teary just thinking about having the, the opportunity to have been there to celebrate his life. What a special moment. Wow, John, this is so special. Your experiences and your expeditions and your leadership and also your inspiration and how you convey that to others. I see in the back, Warrior Challenge. So this is a book that, this is my third book, but it is the most recent one that I've written. It's called The Warrior Challenge, Eight Quests for Boys to Grow Up with Kindness, Courage, and Grit. And what I noticed throughout the course of my climbing life is guys in particular get a message of, there's not a course of, here's how to grow up as a young man today. We used to have rites of passages. Now those don't exist any longer. So this book is eight quests for boys ages 10 to 18 
to get role models of men who had to live by their values and their virtues in order to succeed. And the readers get those values like self-awareness, boundary setting, integrity, grit and resilience, how to respect others who aren't like them, including women, how to treat others equally. All these traits are what think needs to be the rite of passage for young men today. So that's why I wrote it. And that's why it exists. And I think that now, especially in the USA, it's needed more than ever. And it teaches a healthier version of masculinity where it's not saying, oh, be wimpy. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying be tough as hell, but also know when to ask for help, know how to be vulnerable and know how to find the right people, the right teammates to go looking for encouragement when you need it. And that's the real definition of strength. Beautiful. And I'm certainly interested in women leadership, but my mantra is always we need to work together. So we can't alienate the men and the women. We need to work together. And that's where we get to the path of success. I completely agree. We need to work together. And that's why I think that because guys get a different message, we need to be able to step up and say, here's how we support women. And I would love to have a version of the book that's eight quests for girls to grow up with kindness, courage, and grit so that women can learn how to support guys and all genders. We all need to be supportive of one another. What is the next mountain that you're climbing? So my next mountain, my next adventure, I want to sail around the world. And I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know when that's going to happen. I want to own a, a multifamily home that I can stay in for part of the year when I'm wanting stability. And then when I want to go sail, I can go get on my sailboat and rent out part of the home so I can have the income. That's my current mountain. Okay, that's fantastic. It seems like when people are mountaineering, they say, what is the next mountain? What is the next mountain? And you have obviously climbed all of the highest mountains. So anything else can also be a mountain. So very beautiful. Thank you so much, John. This is really inspiring and motivating. Let's make a Sounds plan. Great. Let's climb that Thanks, mountain. Suzanne. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thanks for having me. Thank you, John. What an inspirational talk, mountaineering and leadership, getting the best team, recruiting the best team, but also have some fun. Don't take yourself so serious. What will you take away? Take it from the Iron Woman has episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. Don't miss out. There is something for everybody. Not everybody needs to climb Kilimanjaro or Mount Everest or be an Iron Man. Take it from the Iron Woman and make sure to order Loopy. Loopy is the plant-based snack. You need proteins, you need good food when you want to climb the mountains. GetLoopy.com is where you order. Get Loopy and you will be getting 20% off of your first order. And Take It From The Iron Woman is also a book. It's an e-book or a paper book. You can order it on Amazon. Take It From The Iron Woman. See you next time. Thank you for chiming in.